Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Brianna Approved Podcast. We have a very special and dear friend on the show today. We have Anthony Renna, who has been in the fitness business industry for 20 years, curating content for fitness professionals and has over 10,000 hours of training people under his belt, which actually makes him an expert by definition. Anthony is the author of Be Like the Best, a guide to reaching the top in the fitness profession, and is also the host of the Strength Coach podcast, which actually just celebrated its 15-year anniversary, so he is not new to podcasting. Um, And his podcast consists of interviews with the top strength coaches, fitness pros, nutritionists, and fitness business coaches. And lastly, Anthony's newest project titled 50 for 50 a 50-day body transformation challenge helps men in their 50s look better and feel great in just 50 days without insane long workouts or strict dieting. Anthony, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. You think um, this is not my first podcast, but based on this lighting right now, I'm, uh, I'm actually in a closet. I'm trying a new thing for my for to record sometimes, so... I like it. Actually, the first time I ever recorded a podcast episode, my brother had suggested that I go in the closet for the acoustics and to not pick up background noise. So I think it's probably a good idea. Yeah, that's the thing is that I'm I were I have a a a a co working studio that I'm part of. So they have a podcast room, but I've been using a lot of the hours there in that podcasting room, and I have the, the project for fifty fifty. I have a bunch of stuff I need that room for. So I, and I'm also kind of just to record something and not have to worry about going down there. The acoustics in these things in a closet are great. So here we are. That's what I hear. And that's why you're the professional that you are. Well, (laughs) I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. I've been saying this about podcasts in general. It like forces people to get together and catch up. And so for those of you who don't know, Anthony is actually somebody that I hold near and dear to my heart. You're just so ardent about all things fitness. I have nothing but respect and adoration for you. I don't know if you remember this or not, um, but you were like actually one of the first people who was like, quote, a paying client of mine when I was interning on the floor above you. I was interning about 70 hours a week when I was in grad school. Anthony's business was down below and he was so kind. I think we went to like either Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or something and we talked and walked around and I suggested health things to buy and you've been um, one of the people that I admire the most ever since. All right, well, it's been great. I mean, that was about 12 years ago, right? 2010, right? Yes. Was that yes. 2010? Um, and just to see, like, yes, you were an intern working your butt off, like going to school so much, working upstairs so much with those guys. And I even said one time when you were on vacation, I said, why is Brianna here to the owner? And he was like, oh, well, she's on vacation. She wants to work. I'm like, dude, no. Tell, don't let her do this is her vacation you that brianna's the type of person that won't say no to work and just is going to be you know get crazy like you got to teach her to not be doing this stuff sometimes too but you are all over it and that's why right away i trusted you to you know kind of learn from you and uh and and here we are 12 years later I appreciate that. Yes, those were in the height of my people pleasing days. I still am a recovering people pleaser, but I do remember you kind of going to bat for me very early on and being like, okay, you're right. I got to like draw some boundaries. But I mean, it's been so cool to just see. Well, first of all, you literally have been podcasting before podcasting has been a thing. So I can imagine what a love hate relationship it's been because everybody and their mother has a podcast now. And you've done a lot of different iterations of it, but I've also seen like your business evolve and how you've done certain things too, and then your personal health. So I would actually personally love to hear just from your point of view, what your definition currently of like what living a healthy, your best life means and sort of how that definition has evolved for you over the past few years, especially with different athletes you've worked with, different demographics, and then just yourself personally, like what is health? What does your version of health mean? Yeah, and I think that's obviously evolved over time because when you first get in this business and you're thinking, you don't always think for yourself. You kind of think of this picture of health and whatever. Let's call it the six-pack abs or uh, somebody who's working out five or six times a week, et cetera. 
And that's really evolved over time because as you get older, I'm 55 now, as you get older, you understand it's really, you need to base it in reality. And, and not only as you get older, the more people that you work with, that you start, and, and I, my facility that we, you mentioned before was called Five Iron Fitness. I worked with golfers. Those, that demographic was males, mm -hmm. 45 to 83. Mm -hmm. For the most part, that was 85% of my clients. So you start to understand it's not, number one, it's not always about the gym. Number two is there's other people involved, a family, kids, there's work involved. So for example, when you go and you want to lose some weight or you want to change your habits, it's not always about you. It's You hear parents talk about it. I took my kids, they wanted to go to McDonald's and I, I have them eating McDonald's, but then the kids leave the McNuggets and they're oh, eating the McNuggets or even going to the diner and they're having a salad and then the kids had fries and they're going to pick up those fries. There's other, so many other factors involved. And so that's where like just to segue into 50 for 50 was the 50 day challenge for men. And when I turned 50, I kind of had my own personal transformation to try to say, Hey, I need to get my shit together, to be honest. And, and do better. And uh, I wanted to look better. I wanted to feel better. And there was this idea of, I don't want to be in the gym. Mm -hmm. I don't even like going to the gym three times a week. I, I'd love to do two, but two is not really great. I want it to be three, but I wanted to be able to incorporate the things that are, that I love to do. I do love to walk. I do love to hike and rock and I do love the bike. So I wanted to figure out how do I get in the gym, get in and out of the gym? How do I find not, not diets, but more nutritional principles? Like for example, you know, you should eat more protein to kind of, you know, have, make sure you're, you have muscle and, and, you know, as you live, right. As you go, as you, as you move on, you want to make sure you're, you're retaining that muscle. And then what about water and, and this idea about maybe a little bit less calories. So like fasting, whatever. So, this idea of principles, not so much like, hey, don't eat after seven o'clock or, you know, have 1.2 grams of protein. That's just not based in reality. So the long answer right there to your question, the short answer would be it's really now based in reality. Love that. I think that is such a seminal point for people to hear because I say this to clients all the time, too, like we nowadays everybody wants to be a guru and a fitness and people will interview like top successful ceos and they're like what does your routine look like and yeah when you're maybe a millionaire or you have help or whatever you could do a 30-step routine in the morning and take all this time and it's like okay but if you're a mom of three kids and you got to get one on the bus and your husband's going to work like it's just not realistic so it's also about i think making a lifestyle that's realistic and enjoyable but also sustainable on some level Hundred percent, Bree. And two things that I started on social media when I started the fifty fifty social media was Old Man Power Tuesdays, where I show one upper body exercise and one lower body exercise. It was like, guys, add these two exercises after your warm up and before you work out. All you need is a med ball, and you need uh, and you know a place to jump. You need right in this box. And then I did I do one tool Wednesdays every Wednesday to take away the excuses. I don't belong to a gym. I don't have a lot of room. I don't have a lot of equipment. So I take one tool, whether that's two dumbbells or one dumbbell or one kettlebell or a sandbag or bands or body weight, and I show them a workout that they can do, right? So stop making your excuses. You just saw me do a workout in this little box mm -hmm. with one piece of equipment. So to your point is not everybody always has, I'm trying to answer that objection with really- oh with totally. those things. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have this. I don't have that. Well, here you go. I love it. You podcast from a closet and you work out in a small room and you make it happen and you're enjoying it the whole time. And you're also ruining my rapid fire questions at the end. Cause I have a question about your one tool Wednesday. So we will circle right. back to there that. <laughs> um, but no, I, I love that you talk about that because I talk a lot about this idea of chronological aging versus biological aging. You know, the idea of like, you meet people who are a young spring chicken at 80 years old, and then you meet somebody who's like 35 and they're just, you know, hanging on by a thread and they're just kind of surviving and not thriving. So I think we have an interesting relationship with aging in 
America, particularly, everything is so focused on anti-aging and, you know, like how to look younger. And there's, I think, a fine line with that. So I always say that aging is a gift because you're not guaranteed to wake up and, you know, live another day, live to see another day. So what do you think, since this is my intake on aging as a gift, what would you say now that you're in your 50s was maybe something that you have been pleasantly surprised about in the aging process or something that like you maybe feared when you were younger and you actually find more enjoyable that you're a little bit older and can value the gift of aging a bit more? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think when, you know, when you're in your teens and you look at somebody who's 30 you think old when you're 25 you look at somebody who's 45 and like oh my god their life is you know practically over right um and so the this perception that i probably had when i was when i was younger let's say even in my 20s and if i think about it my dad in 1994 okay was 55 Wow. And at that point in his life, he had children, right? Men, boys. One was 30, one's 26, wow. and one is 24. I'm 55. I can't even imagine that. I don't have kids, but I can't imagine that piece of it thinking, here's an old man. And I remember my dad was, you know, kind of out of shape or whatever. And you just kind of assumed your back was going to hurt and yeah. all these things were going to happen to you and that you wouldn't be able to do anything. Cause again, that was the household that I lived in that really what fitness wasn't a priority or anything like that. So I think for me, it's been pleasantly surprised. And although I do have really good genetics, like I, mm-hmm. I'm 55, I have all my hair. I don't have any gray hair. My skin is pretty good. Um, that's genetics. Right. But, and my parents, my father, my, my, my mother, their, their brothers and sisters always looked good, even as they were aging, just like from a body perspective, maybe not. But I just assumed like all these things were going to happen. And that's been the good thing. I feel amazing. I really do feel the best shape I've ever been in. I feel the strongest I've ever been. And I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that. And I don't have any, really, you know, I had knee surgery last year, but it was a meniscus. I mean, these little things are going to, are going to hit you, but they, they won't stop you or they didn't stop me. So I felt like that was the pleasant surprise and not to segue into what you're doing, but I think what you're doing and your shift to really mental health and anxiety and depression, that might be the missing link because there's a reason why somebody might not be moving. Totally. And a lot of times it's up here, right? It's because of what's going on in their life and you have to, hopefully find strategies to get past that too. Cause a lot of times you just get depressed and it becomes, you get steamroll, you steamroll into it. That's what we just were inside for two years. Not we, not we, I wasn't, but yeah, the, the country, the world was inside for two years. Yeah. I mean, I know that you worked with a lot of golfers and I feel like golf is such a mentally vexing sport because you do have to be really mentally tough. And I think that's why some of these individual sports and athletes, you know, they have such intense insane pressure but i think we look at like mental health and then brain health as two separate things because they are so is there something that you feel like you've done maybe for your brain you know like healthy brain stuff that you're like cool this is great i know you like outdoor stuff but then things that maybe you've implemented into your mental health things as you've evolved and gotten older and more into that that has been profound or helpful for you When I read the book Brain Rules for the first time, I think his name is John Medina, brain scientist. The first chapter, and this is, I probably read that book at least 15 years ago. The first chapter is on exercise. Mm -hmm. And he talked about Jack LaLanne. He wasn't, he said, don't look at Jack LaLanne from his body. Jack LaLanne was so sharp at 98 years old. Mm-hmm. And he, they, when you watch Jacqueline, don't look at the burpees or jumping jacks. Listen to him speak at that age. And that was a big shift for me to understand. I want to make sure I'm always moving. When can I keep moving? So for me, from a mental health perspective, not just going into, again, not going into the gym. That That's, a, and 
by the way, that's great. Obviously, I want to go in the gym, but from the perspective of my everyday life, keep moving, you know, park farther away, take the stairs, go for that morning walk, go for the evening walk. I have a dog now, so that that helps. Yeah. But I still, even without the dog at night, I try to do like a 15, 20 minute ruck around the lake and and keep that going. So that's one thing. And I think the other thing just might be to really be honest with yourself and to recognize certain things. Um, I think for me, I have kind of recognized this low level depression that I've gotten over the last couple. I moved to Indiana, Indianapolis two years ago, mm -hmm. and it's not woe is me. My life is bad depression because that's not the only depression you can have. But the, the 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 social integration that I am missing right now that I was in a building in White Plains mm -hmm. where I had there was security on the bottom and you know there was a doorman and then there was a parking garage so I, I got to see all those people every day I walked to work every day I passed all these people I knew people I went to a building where there was another gym there was two other gyms and I was up on the third floor by that time and I saw and had contact with all these people. And I moved to Indiana in the middle of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Don't know anybody. Don't have a place to go to work. And now I'm, so I think over that last couple of years, I, and so being honest with yourself and even being able to say it for me, it's like, okay, you got to keep that on the tip of your tongue and, and don't be afraid of that and, and keep thinking about it and keep, you know, reminding yourself that, this could be a, a, you know, some strategies that you can do to help and to keep moving. So those are two things for me, awareness and honesty. And then this idea about just got to keep moving. Awareness is always the first step in changing anything with your health, right? Like if you can't admit that you're the problem or you're the thing that's the common denominator is really important. But I think it's also so important nowadays too, to actually give yourself some of that grace because things like anxiety and depression it's on a spectrum and there's not, it's not a disease. It's a not like something that's necessary. It's, you know, it's a lack of imbalances in the body. There's a lot of, you know, comorbidities and different ideologies for it. But I think it's, you know, we live in this world now too, where people have kind of made it cheeky and like, oh yeah, I have anxiety or I suffer from depression and there's jokes. And it's like, right. But there are, there is actually this like oscillating kind of way of like, yeah, one day I can be feeling really great, but you uproot some core values of like social interaction. I mean, that's a form of, you know, like how they punish people in prison. They isolate people, you know, yes. like you, you undervalue that. You, you, it's amazing. That's that you brought that up. And I just, I like what you said about the grace, allowing yourself some, you know, right. Allowing yourself that grace and, and not beating yourself up over it and to understand it. So it's, it's a really uh, great point, but you're right. What do they do? What do they do when they want to punish somebody? They put them in isolation and it, it's crazy. And and for me, that's been a huge piece of it here is to try to say, how do I, how do I fix that? And, um, and that's another thing going back to your earlier question was really understanding that you need to take a role. You need to take the, the, the role is, is your responsibility mm -hmm. to take care of yourself. Okay. You know, I don't want to get into a vaccine uh, conversation, but I always hated like people like vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. I'm like, great. I have no problem. But what are also are you doing? Are you going outside? Are you making sure you have the right vitamin D? That was used to be your favorite thing. <laughs> on Instagram. Day. Right? Morning D. And then, um, right. Are you getting the vitamin D? Are you uh, are you drinking less? Are you doing a certain what are you doing for your health? Stop looking for a pill or a shot what else are you doing so that's a big thing for me that i've kind of really focused on as well is like what am i doing first what am i doing then what can somebody else do to help me totally it's like it's what am i doing and then what am i allowing and then what am i allowing that doesn't serve me anymore and where do i actually need to unlearn and let go of narratives rules beliefs that just, and then people, I think, you know, if you've met people on that version of you and then you've evolved, it's like, you're almost living this dichotomy of like, okay, well, I believe this now. And then I think it is, everybody wants to be on such one stance. And that's why I am such like a health agnostic in general. I'm like, listen, it should never become a religion. It should never become a rule. What worked for you a week ago might not work for you now. And that's so important that people can be open to that, even with yourself and others. And like, it's whatever makes you feel happy and healthy. Like, and 
listening and checking in with your body as opposed to just blaming or just jumping to a new, whether it's a trend or something you want to, you know, try and fit in. And that's kind of like, I, I, that's what I'm seeing sort of, you know, in the wellness industry now, but you've been in this for much longer than I like, are there some trends that you've been seeing that just make you roll your eyes and you're like, I can't believe people are leaning into this or things that you're just absolutely sick of people doing or or leading with? Uh, You know, look, I, um, First of all, I love what you said about about people understanding uh, that not only that they they have to take it into their own hands, but but understanding that what worked for you at one point in your life might not work now. You have a client you say, "Well, I got to start jogging because when I jog three times a week, I lost like a lot of weight." I'm like, Dan, you're 25 years. That was 25 years ago. You had a different lifestyle. Like this is like, like, let's work on this now. Right. But for me, it's not one particular tool. It's this idea of give me the pill, give Mm -hmm. me the shot. What's the easiest way. It's like that movie Wally, right? Do you remember that? The cartoon Wally W A L. No, it's where the, 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 you know, the world, we were taken over by really the one store, the Walmart type store. And we let everybody do everything for us. We're not leaving the home anymore. It's like you're in this car and you have the shield over your head and you just sit on your couch and you get everything delivered. And I'm not saying this about Peloton or the mirror or anything like that. I just, those are all great. Like I never heard anybody say, Oh, I hate my Peloton. Yeah. But I just feel like people think that's going to be the only solution. And that's where, not to bring up 50 for 50, but that's what I'm trying to talk to these guys about. Look, we're going to go to the gym two to three times a week. We're going to, you're going to have to do a morning walk, maybe an evening walk. You're going to have to take the stairs. You're going to have to do this, right? There's, it's not about this one hour, three times a week or the old infomercials, 20 minutes, three times a week, right? <laughs> um, So that's really what I'm getting like I get frustrated with, and that's not new, but it's, it seems to be getting worse, mm-hmm. right? Like the, there's more of these never leave your home again. Just yeah. stay right here. Let them come to you. And maybe it's because I need to talk to people. I need to be in front of people. I need to touch them that that bothers me. But I think that's the thing that I see us going in and mm-hmm. the technology gets better. And you got these tech, this technology where somebody's practically in your home. It's crazy. You know, it, it's wild because I mean, from a very basic evolutionary like thought process, we evolved from tribes. And I think that is why people ultimately do love and hyper fixate on like, okay, I'm a CrossFitter, I'm a paleo person, I'm a faster. And then people do make it a religion and a lifestyle because on some subconscious level, we want to feel like people are speaking the same language as us and they understand what we're going through and you want because we are so disconnected even though we have all these technologies. So it makes sense to be like, yeah, I want to feel connected to people and I want to feel intellectually stimulated. But at the same time, our attention span is getting less and less and people are not connecting on a deeper level. Communication has become such a lost art. So it's like a really weird time to be living in. And we're seeing the rise of mental health issues and anxiety and depression. And it's like, but we have all these tools at the same time. And to me, it just feels very like a lot of, you know, sizzle and, and no, you know, steak or however the saying goes. Yeah, you're right. And it's people not, taking that responsibility to get out there and do that, do that stuff and say, I need to go do this, or I need to go do that or not. Hey, come deliver it to me. What's the easiest way for me to do this? What's the shortest way? That's what I'm, I mean, when you, after a while, you just get, you have to be careful when you're in this business, not to let that just totally get you disgruntled from wanting to even work with anybody or see anybody (laughs) it's hard to not get a little jaded because everybody is trying to reinvent the wheel and i'm like guys if the wheel was to have been reinvented probably would have been done by now and it's interesting because it's always the long road like the short road is the longest road actually it's like the idea of when people buy you know, cheap clothes. Like, sure, you could keep buying a t-shirt for $2 or you could, because you think you're spending less, right? Like in the short term, or you could invest in something really good and it costs a little bit more upfront, but like the longevity there and the quality there is going to have a much more profound impact. Totally. Just say, don't go to 
uh, Old Navy or H and M. Yeah, you know, unless it's like a date night, you need something cute, or you got a podcast or something like that. Yeah. Um, well, I do actually want to hear a lot more about your next challenge for the fifty for fifty because it does start in January, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So just kind of taking advantage of the. No, the new- totally. New year, new me. That's when momentum, motivation, right. discipline, whatever, whatever you know, side of the the scale you fall on. So I think when people are inundated now with like all new programs to start with and stuff like that, or what should I do, or or it just feels intimidating, what would you say to somebody who is like, maybe they've been following you, they hear this podcast, and they're potentially hesitant or on the fence, and they're looking at this as like, okay, this is maybe a formidable task for me. Like, what what would be some things you would say to them for some of those hesitations they might have? Yeah, it, it's actually... I think if somebody was following me or looked on the site and saw what was going on, they, they would actually say the opposite. And, and actually that could be a bad marketing thing for me. Everybody, because we, we just talked about it. Totally. Everybody wants the extreme. They want to see, you know, they're, they're going to buy from the guy that has his shirt off, you know, the celebrity trainers, et cetera, et cetera. And the, get the, the, the quick guarantees, the, the 30 days, I don't promise anything in the 50 day challenge. I, it's a start. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the PDF that you can get off of my site for free is called the comeback six easy ways men in their fifties can get back in shape. So knowing my demographic, it's the guys that are in their fifties who kind of lost their way with fitness a little bit. It's kind of the kinder, gentler approach. It's, it's, we're not going to the gym four days a week. We're not five days a week. We're not doing body part splits. We're doing total body workouts. We're trying to get these workouts done in 20 to 30 minutes. We have the one tool Wednesday idea, like the what I call micro workouts as well. Mm-hmm. All of these extra things to say, what's your excuse? You can't do it. No, you can. Also, we're going to try to teach you to incorporate the, the habits, not just habits, but like I said, can you take the stairs? Can you pick a day to ride your bike to work in the summer? Can you walk to work? Can you, whatever it may be, can you park a little bit farther? Can you go for that evening walk? Can you do all these things? And again, going back to the nutrition, what are the the principles? Not have the Tupperware filled with chicken, you know, 42 grams of chicken. And that's great. That's fine. I have no problem with people doing that. This is not that program. This is the this is the first step. And you know, I do have 50 more and another 50 for the second and third steps. But uh for me, it it is the anti-fitness uh, uh program, really. Not it's not that, hey, you know, six minutes a day, twice a week, we got you covered. <laughs> so much of what I do with clients and myself, even I feel like when my health got to like the best has ever been and whatever, it's literally doing less to get more out of your health. I'm like, take one less supplement, do take, you know, like take one more phone call with a friend, There's something that's going to be like vitamin R for relaxation. And that is the, I, one of the first things I make clients do actually in like their first week of working with me is they have to work on what I call like their anti-stress list. And I'm like, you need to make a list of 10 things that has nothing to do with you being in like, you know, wife or boyfriend mode or like, you know, coworker mode or fr- like think something that's just totally for you. And like something as small as going to get a cup of coffee to trying to go on a yoga retreat, which is like people think that's going to cure their problems or whatever. And a li- making a list of 10 things is hard for people to be like, well, I don't even know what I can do to that's not so extreme and go, go, go. And like I'll sleep when I'm dead. You know, it's so much of it is undoing what we have been programmed to think is going to give us the results. Everybody wants to add. Sometimes you got to subtract too. It's my favorite. Right. Health subtraction is the only kind of math I am interested in. Yeah, it's and you know, it's this idea of the minimal effective dose. What and that's really what this program what I've tried to do, you know. By the way, that's because that's what I do. It's not like um I'm liver king telling you to eat liver and, and testicles and, and then, you know, taking steroids. Growth, yeah. And then taking growth hormones and stuff, you know, um, I just, and full disclosure, I, as I transitioned out of selling a couple of membership websites and saying, what can I do next over the last, the last couple of years, I wanted to do something that wasn't going to take a ton of effort 
from the perspective of, of what am I doing? Right. Yeah. What oh, I have to teach these guys golf and I need a facility and all this thing. What am I doing? People are saying, Oh, you look great. You're 55. Wow. I can't believe it. And no, you're in great shape. And what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And I said, maybe I should do something where I'm telling them what I'm doing. And so that's really where it came from. And I was like, this would be great if I could just be like, Hey, this is what I do every day. Here's what we do. Let's do this together. Yeah. And so I think that for me has been the big push from that perspective, it's like that minimal effective. Cause I like to have a couple of bourbons a couple of nights a week and, you know, oh have, a, have some, have some dessert, you know? And that's another thing, again, going back to, you know, my wife loves dessert, right? I mean, a couple of, so in the beginning, like five years ago, when I first did this, she might be like, you're not going to have, can you just have like, can we split the dessert then? Mm-hmm. And you, you know, that's when bad things happen and you go off track. So I was like, no, I want to be able to do all these other things and still look good, feel great, still have a life and keep off the weight. Right. Hell yes. Life is meant to be lived. I remember my brother and I say this all the time. It's like our cheeky tagline. We say, you know, stomach rolls are temporary, but memories are forever. Mm. And it's so true because it's like, you're not going to you know, like regret having, yeah, the dessert with your significant other because you want to look a half a kilo, you know, lighter or whatever. So you, know, you got no, it. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think you said the half a kilo. It's so funny because the first challenge I was trying to get 10% body fat, mm-hmm. which is like ridiculous drinking one glass of wine a night and, as well. And, and I got to like 13 and it was great. And, and, but 13, 14, 15, nobody knows. You no, don't, you no. can hardly tell, right? Maybe if I got to 10, yeah, you'd be like, okay, great. But I don't want to live that lifestyle. So like you said, for that extra half a body fat percentage, it's not worth it. And it's the trade-off that people don't realize. Like, yeah, okay, you are weighing five pounds less or whatever, but you also missed out on making a memory. You missed out on like going out or, you know, the psychological, you know, stress that you're giving yourself. So it's like, I think it, it, but I feel like if you don't have that extreme at some point, you don't even know what your version of like normal and homeostasis is. So I tell people, I'm like, do it, go ahead, do the crazy extreme. Like I did it, you know, I did fitness competitions back in the day. And then I was like, okay, I don't want to bring my own food to Christmas Eve with my family. Like this is not it for me long-term. No, you can't be Italian and do that. I know. My family was like ripping on me left and right. Um, yeah, I remember when you went through, you did your body thing. And you're you're so right. You have to kind of go through that to feel like, you know what? And some people might say, oh, I have no I problem. It. But but no, it, you. I think majority of the people will always come back and be like, see this picture? I was thin and at 10% and blah, blah, blah. I was miserable. Yeah. You had no social life, no sex drive. I always joke. I'm like, cool. The times that I've been like the most shredded because I usually was like out of a relationship or something. And I'm like, I look the best, but I'm like, wasn't having sex with anybody or anything. You know what I mean? So it's like this invert. And I'm like, okay, so who am I doing this for? You know, so you're like spending all this time or saying like, oh, I don't want to go and do this because I have to look a certain way. And then you're like, but I'm not even sharing this with anybody. So what's the point? What's what's good looking good naked if you're not naked? (laughs) <laughs> that needs to be on a coffee mug for you. That should be on the back of your 50 for 50 shirts. There we go. I know you're like anti-dad bod, right? Isn't that your thing as well? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, like it's not only anti-dad bod. It's like, it's a reminder for me. It's saying dad bod suck. Like I got to keep going. And and that, the dad bod, I might have a different definition, but for me, it was more about, you know, not letting yourself get super soft, you know, I don't have a six pack. I got a little extra here too, but I'm strong. I feel good. I can do a lot of things. That's more what I meant by the, but that was more of a reminder, but yeah, we don't want to be, you know, nobody wants to look like that. That soft little dad part. Okay. Well, I want to ask you some fun, rapid fire-ish questions because besides your non-dad bod, your personality is one of the best things about you. So people should like learn a little bit more about you. Are you ready? Sure. We're going to start off light and then we're going to get a little bit heavier. Okay. Okay. So first things first, if you had to pick a sport, hockey or golf? Hockey. Hockey, really? Oh, God. Okay. Who's your team? Islanders. Islanders. Go Islanders. Okay. Right on. Um, I know you're a big bourbon guy. So what is your favorite bourbon to drink after a long day or you're celebrating life? 
Yeah, right now I just got a bottle of Blanton's as a gift. And that, between that, Weller and Buffalo Trace, those are kind of the picks. But the problem is right now bourbon's a really weird place. A lot of people are buying up the really even like cheaper bourbons that are really good, like a Buffalo Trace, and okay. they're selling it on a secondary market. So unfortunately, right now for me, those are like I, I value those because I don't really get them. So what I do, I'm so excited about getting either a Buffalo Trace or a Blanton's or a Weller. What's a good starter bourbon for people who are trying to dip their toe in the bourbon game? Yeah, if you can get your hands on Buffalo Trace, um, Basil Hayden, much easier to get. Okay. Um, that's another one. You want to kind of stay in that right around 90, 90 proof, I should say, when you're beginning because, you know, some of them get up. 101 is like the magic number for 101 proof for, for bourbon drinkers. It's kind of like that really good balance. But once you get higher than that, it can be a little, you know, a little scary. But uh, but yeah, like a Basil Hayden to me is a really good entry. Wood, Woodford Reserve is another one. That's my favorite. So I, we were on a family reunion this summer and there was this guy named Captain Mike. Shout out to Captain Mike and wherever we were, Maryland. And he had like uh, bourbon. He's like, while we were waiting, he's like, you want a shot of this? And I was like, I don't think so, but sure, I'm on vacation. And then I was like, this is really good. So now that's my new drink is like, I drink Manhattans with the Woodford Reserve bourbon. And I feel very yeah. regal. Awesome. Did you do a shot of the Woodford? I did. And I was like, this oh. is nice. I'm into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sip it uh, neat, unless it's a little, unless it's over 101 proof, then I'll have the big ice ice cube in there. But, okay. uh, but yeah, doing shots, I'm like, I, I'm drinking it straight normally. So I'm always yeah. doing shots. I'm going to, I'm going to try some of the ones that you um, said. Okay. Yeah. So what um, is a piece of either health or fitness advice that you would give to your younger self? Oh, wow. Um, I would say look for more ways, get out there, get in nature, get those walks in, not to be cliche like with the steps, but go and get in nature more. And I did a lot of that, but I didn't do enough. I, I, I had this mentality of the, you know, fitness being, you know, in the gym. And then I would beat myself up because it wasn't something I really liked or he did a lot or really was good at. So for me, it would be like, get out there, keep walking, keep biking, keep doing what you love. That's what's going to help you maintain longevity in, in this game. Love that. Okay. What is the best piece of a business advice you've either received or wished you had learned earlier? I, I think the best advice, Dan Silver, my my second client ever one time said to me in the gym my gym he said he started with me in equinox right and i used to go to his house after that and then he when i opened my own facility he came to my own facility he used to say and this is really good things are going great look at this. this is, you got this another room here this is great isn't it great i'm like yeah he's like i don't want to burst your bubble but something bad's gonna happen soon and i'm like what he goes yeah it's gonna be bad but you're gonna get through it and then something good's gonna happen and things are gonna be great but then something bad's gonna happen again and you know you're gonna have to go through it and it's gonna be tough but then it's gonna be good again and you're gonna learn from all these things so just remember this is a roller coaster ride and you know enjoy the ride you're gonna be okay you have all the tools to do what is important. Keep growing, keep learning. And just remember that you're going to have your ups and downs. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's amazing advice. Okay. Um, what is a health or fitness rule that you think more people should break? So like, for example, you know, everyone's like, oh, I can't eat carbs after six. And I do this with clients all the time. And I'm like, that's a rule that's been ingrained in your head. I'm like, I want you to eat a carb at 6.05 PM tonight. And then tell me how you feel tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, very similar idea is that um, don't don't look at at um, uh, too many people look at the minutia of 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 this stuff, right? Tracking food logs that's great for a week or whatever to learn about it, right? But to me, uh, count count like looking at the the number of carbs in the beginning maybe great, but it just can't be a lifestyle. 
for you. And I think that's one rule for me is that, and that's what I'm trying to do with this thing is just to, like I said, it's more about the principles and behaviors than about specifically maybe what you eat. So for me, I think it's more about like, you can't eat this or you can't eat that. And I think there's been so many studies showing that, uh, you know, for example, if you were fasting, right, or we're doing certain things, it, it almost doesn't matter. Uh, oh but, God. but don't get me wrong. We still want to have our, our, you know, our really good principles and behaviors, but there's some things that people look at it and it's too, uh, it's, they're too wrapped up in the minutia. Love that. Agreed. Okay. What is a morning or nighttime routine non-negotiable for you? I'm not a big fan of having like a 30 step wellness thing at nighttime and morning. Yeah. I don't think it's realistic. So what's one thing that you yeah. have to do in the morning or night? I really have to take the freezing cold shower. It's only, it might be like a minute and a half sometimes because I'm a, I'm a, I'm not a morning person. Mm -hmm. So cool. to walk the dog, B and I walk Emma together every morning. So that. whether that's like eight o'clock, seven 30, or usually eight, sometimes I'll get up at like 10 to eight. She's like, let's go. You got to get, but I need to get in that shower. Okay. That minute and a half freezing cold shower uh, for me is really something that I get mad if I don't, if I'm not able to take it. So I, the cold shower for me and you know, look, what am I doing? I'm going for that walk. So that's kind of another thing that I really, I need to do. Yes. I love walking. I think it's like the most underrated piece of fitness advice anybody like is missing. Absolutely. Okay. One tool Wednesday. We love this for you. Do you remember what your first tool was that you told people about and what has been your favorite tool that you've instilled in people? Yeah. First tool, I started out with body weight. Okay. So I do remember that one. And my favorite tool is the kettlebell. Ooh, I too. think it's super versatile and I don't always show it like for like swings because it's not something that really you can learn and, you know, just, I'm really just showing the exercises, not teaching them. So, but man, I've, I've been doing some stuff from Brett Jones, the iron, iron, iron cardio workouts and uh, for 20 minutes, a couple days a week, you know, throwing that when I can't get to the gym, it's amazing. This kettlebell has so much versatility with it for me uh, that I, if I could do, if I only could have one tool, it would be the kettlebell. I agree. The first CrossFit gym I ever belonged to, actually, he was like a kettlebell master. So we learned everything on the kettlebells before you could even touch a barbell. So shout out Greg Killian many moons ago at CrossFit Belmar. Nice. Yes. Belmar, Jersey. Um, okay, three more questions. And then you can tell everybody how they can sign up for your challenge, where they can follow you, how to listen to your podcast, all the things. Okay. So what is either the last uh, book or podcast or movie or piece of content that you consumed that you either learn something new from or that you have adopted into your life? Um, it's funny. I had Patrick McCune who wrote The Oxygen Advantage wow. uh, a bunch of years back, five or six, seven years ago. Uh, I had him on the show yesterday. And, and one thing that I do every night is I tape my mouth to mm -hmm. make sure I'm breathing through my nose. And uh, uh, so I had him on the show and... There's some things that I haven't been doing like that. Like, you know, when you read a book and you're like, oh, this is awesome. And then you, you kind of take a couple things, you know, cause we want to add things, not subtract them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we take a couple things from that and then we kind of forget about some of the other things. So for me, some of his breath holding stuff that uh, I really want to start to incorporate into, into kind of being able to, to make sure my, my respiratory system and my breath is, is, uh, um, functioning really well uh i, I want to incorporate they incorporate those so it wasn't something i just learned but in doing my research i listened to his book again and um so those were some things i do try to breathe through my nose as much as i can uh i sleep with the the mouth uh you know with the thing and i try to do some cardio low zone two cardio with my mouth shut the whole time only nose breathing so I, that's something that I, I really feel like is important Love it. Everybody's really been paying hopefully more attention to their respiratory health over the past few years. So love that. Okay. Um, per our mental health conversation, I'm a very big proponent of let's, it's probably the Jersey in me, like, let's just get to it. What is the bumper sticker version or the mantra that you have for days when you're having like an off day or you're kind of feeling stuck, not like a whole, you know, dissertation on this is what you should do. Like, what is your kind of, you say it to yourself, it maybe puts you back into like, I got my shit together mode. 
Um, it's either put the rock on or go pick up some heavy shit. Love that. Yes. Motion is the lotion. Hell yes. Okay. It really is. Last question. Um, since you are now in your 50s and you know you've transitioned into, you know, your 30s, 40s, everything's evolved and you're flexible and you know, you're living your best life. How do you want to or how do you intend to live the next year of your life? What is really like an intention or a focus that you really want to, you know, be more consciously aware of for this next year? Wow. Um, I think, I think it really is the mental health piece. Uh, you know, I was super tired. You had actually given me a call when you f found out, like, remember when I did the mm -hmm. result because I was so tired. I was like, wait, I'm doing everything right. Something's wrong. And I had my heart checked and all this stuff. And I got every test I could possibly imagine. So for me, understanding like, wait a minute, I need to make sure I'm doing the things that I should be doing to take care of up here as well. It's not about, you know, and, and even though like going for the walks or, you know, all these things, I those are all, I got all those boxes checked, but there's some other things that I need to make sure of. I need to check on uh, taking that responsibility into my own hands. So that for the next year, I really want to make sure I'm focusing on that to kind of get me out of those funks sometimes. Love all of your rapid fire answers. And right. since I love all the things that you do, I know all my listeners are going to love you. So how can people follow you? It will all be in the show notes as well, but just, you know, like where do you live the most? What platform, your podcast, let the people know. Yeah. The, the, uh, on Instagram, it's at 50 day challenge for men. The site is 50 for 50 dot fit. So F O R 50 for 50 dot fit. Um, and then if you're in the, if you're a trainer and you want to listen to that stuff, it's strengthcoachpodcast.com. So those are the big things that I'm doing right now. Like it's strength coach podcast, 50 for 50, the two things that I'm really trying to focus on. Love it. And your book is on Amazon. Book is on Amazon. Yep. That's been out for about two years now. So, uh, right yeah. on. if you're awesome. in the fitness business, that'd be a good book to get. Well, thank you for being on the podcast. It's been such an honor. I'm so grateful for your time and wisdom and to call you a friend. Honestly, you know that I love you from the bottom of my heart. So thank you for spending this past hour with me. No, thank you, Brie. It's been amazing over the last 12 years, our friendship. And to see you evolve like from that student and this hardworking student and little CrossFitter and, <laughs> and you know, oh, we, we, opinionated, very opinionated. Yeah. Um, still are, yeah. um, but, but, uh, it's been great to kind of see you evolve and, you know, get your PhD, all these things. It's been awesome to see you grow. So I'm honored to be on the show. Keep oh, doing what you're doing and educating everybody. Uh, you're making such a huge impact. Love you. Yeah. Love you. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.